Athaliah. In our last story, Jehu was used by God to rid Israel of evil. He killed Jezebel and all the remnants of King Ahab. He also toppled the temples of Baal along with all its followers. Jehu killed thousands in the name of a truly free Israel, but the process claimed his heart. Eventually, he succumbed to his own inner evils and strayed away from God. Jehu would forever be honored by God for what he did, but his time as king was marked with suffering, and the kingdom of Israel shrunk under his rule. Now we peer into the life of Athaliah and get a better understanding of how Judah and Israel descended into further dysfunction and pain, inspired by the books of 2 Chronicles and 2 Kings. Hello, I'm Pastor Jack Graham with today's episode of The Bible in a Year. In our last time together, we learned how Jehu cleansed Israel of Ahab's family and brought judgment upon those who carried out his evil and idolatrous legacy. And though Jehu did great things for the Lord, he failed to hold fast to God all the days of his life, and as a result, failed to fully witness to God's glory throughout his lifetime. Today, we look at Athaliah, the daughter of Ahab and Jezebel, whose marriage to Jehoram, the king of Judah, had disastrous consequences on the southern kingdom once again leading Judah into idolatry and unfaithfulness and disobedience to God. So, listen now to the Word of God. The kingdom of Judah was thriving under King Jehoshaphat. He ruled with a fear of the Lord and a genuine love for his people. Surrounding nations respected him, his people loved him, and he had the Spirit of God resting on his soul. For all Jehoshaphat's triumphs as king over Judah— he made one fateful mistake, a mistake that would alter the course of Judah and Israel for several generations. Jehoshaphat learned to broker peace with many surrounding nations, yet there was still disdain between Judah and their sister nation Israel. In an attempt to broker peace, Jehoshaphat betrothed his son Jerome to the daughter of Ahab, Athaliah. Athaliah was the daughter of Ahab and Jezebel. Ahab's corrupt mind and Jezebel's wicked heart had seeped their way into their daughter. Athaliah had the seductive qualities of her mother. Her silver tongue lured Jerome into straying away from the Lord. All of Jehoshaphat's positive influence began to melt as Athaliah spun webs of lies around her husband's mind. Jehoshaphat eventually passed to be with his forefathers, His life was celebrated as one of Judah's truest kings. However, Yoram had no such legacy. He and his wife practiced ancient pagan rituals. Their selfish and lewd practices trickled down into the culture of Judah. King Jehoshaphat had such a peace with God that he was able to stand in the face of vast armies without fear. King Yoram had no such peace. His mind was clouded with paranoia and pride. In an attempt to secure his legacy forever, he killed all six of his brothers. Corruption drenched his thoughts, and Athaliah reveled in her husband's downward spiral. Elisha, the prophet, kept a close eye on the king of Judah. He watched as Athaliah sewed lies into the fabric of Judah. He watched as Yoram secured his line by murdering his brothers. Elisha knew the heart of God, He knew that a king's heart eventually reached the heart of his people. He sent King Joram a message, saying, You have caused the people of Judah to fall into false worship. You have slain your brothers, good men who served the Lord. Because of this, you and your sons will be blotted out from the kingdom. Slowly, Judah's prosperity and favor shifted. With each battle, Judah tallied more and more loss. Nations that were once at peace with Judah began to take away more and more land. Joram felt his kingdom slipping away from him. To add to his woes, Joram was plagued with a crippling stomach illness. For two years, he writhed in pain. Each night, he screamed for mercy. Eventually, Joram and all his sons perished by the same illness. All his sons, but one. Nobody mourned for Joram's death. He was a corrupt man, 
and brought nothing but sorrow to the people of Judah. There was hope for his son, Ahaziah. Hope that he could restore the heart of David and Jehoshaphat. Hope that he might rise above his father's sins and reach out to God for guidance. However, King Ahaziah was also muddled by the doctrine of his mother. Athaliah tutored her son in the ways of Jezebel. She weaved his wicked heart like a tapestry. Eventually, Ahaziah went to visit his uncle, the king of Israel, who had been wounded on the battlefield. There he met Jehu, who sent a sea of arrows to drown him in blood. So Athaliah found herself a widow and childless. Her husband and her sons were weak. Their minds and hearts were malleable and easy to sway, but not hers. Athaliah had a will of iron. She was the daughter of Jezebel and Ahab. She would find a way to remain in power. Athaliah knew that only men from the line of David were chosen as rulers over Judah. As long as the line of David lived, there would be a possibility to be overthrown. So Athaliah conspired to kill all of her grandchildren. Anyone with David's blood running through their veins would feel the cold iron of her dagger. Athaliah conspired with a few of her servants, not knowing that a child of God stood in her midst. Athaliah's daughter peered into her mother's chambers and listened. She heard of Athaliah's plan to murder the line of David to gain power. Athaliah's daughter was married to the high priest Jehoiada. Together they worshipped God and served the people of Judah. She would not allow her mother to murder her child. Before Athaliah sent her guards to murder her grandchildren, her daughter grabbed her baby, Joash, and hid him in the temple of God. Tears streamed down her face as she held her son close. In the distance, she could hear the boots of Athaliah's men. Each one of them scattered throughout the city to find the descendants of David. All the small children were killed, all but Joash, who was held safely in the arms of his mother. Athaliah stood proud in front of the people of Judah, confident she had slain all the descendants of David. She stood proud as the new ruler of Judah. For six years she corrupted the nation with the sins of Jezebel. All the while Joash was kept safe with his father in the temple of God. For seven years he remained there and studied the word of God. Meanwhile, the people who still worshipped the Lord became restless for a king. Jehoiada, the high priest and Joash's father, gathered the trusted leaders and elders of Judah together. They all conversed in secret about Queen Athaliah. They spoke of revolt. They spoke of rebellion. This is when Jehoiada felt comfortable to ask the question, What would you do if I told you there was a descendant of King David still alive? The people paused for a moment, then nodded in agreement. We would make him king, of course, they shouted. Jehoiada nodded and got up from his seat. He went into the other room and brought in his seven-year-old son. Joash stood shyly in front of the crowd. This is Joash, your next king. Gasps filled the room. There in the temple they bowed to the Lord's preserved hope for Judah. Together, the elders devised a plan to bring Joash in front of the people. They rallied troops who were not loyal to the queen and ushered Joash forward in front of the people. His father anointed his head and placed a crown on his head. The people erupted in praise to God in honor of their king. The sounds of applause, music, and laughter echoed through the city. It woke the slumbering Athaliah. She looked out her window to see what was happening. She beheld citizens running through the streets in praise of their new king. Her blood began to boil with hatred. All she had built had begun to crumble. All the murder and lies had been for nothing. She would not admit defeat easily. She rallied some of her guards and stormed the Temple of God. There she saw the seven-year-old Joash sitting upon his throne. She <laughs> cackled towards him, then lifted her finger. Treason, she screamed. Her voice was broken and without control. Her eyes revealed an inner madness. Her hunger for power had driven her insane. Joash was just a child and unable to truly rule on his own. Jehoiada and the elders stood behind him. They were pillars of strength and guidance for him. With resolute strength and God, they stood their ground. Take her away from here, they ordered the guards. 
to Athaliah's surprise, her men did nothing to help her. As she was swept away out of the temple, they dragged her to the horse corral and executed her without a spectacle. Slowly, the hearts of Judah began to heal. They tore down the idols in the city and renewed a culture of worship. As we open today's passage, we're reminded of the righteous reign of Jehoshaphat, king of Judah. His heart was like David's, and he earnestly sought to be close to the Lord and to lead his people to do the same. His rule was marked by success and a glorious time in Judah's history. But in his efforts to secure peace with the northern kingdom of Israel, Jehoshaphat had united with Ahab through the marriage of his son Jehoram to Ahab and Jezebel's daughter, Athaliah. Athaliah was cut from the same cloth as her evil parents and was deeply involved in pagan worship and idolatry. So when Jehoshaphat died and left a flourishing kingdom for Jehoram to rule, things took an unfortunate turn. Athaliah's influence upon Jehoram was stronger than Jehoshaphat's, and soon the royal couple brought back the pagan rituals that poisoned Israel and of which Jehoshaphat had worked so hard to rid from Judah. But as Jehoram discovered, when we turn from God to other sources of power and peace, we will end up with neither. Rather than peace, Jehoram was tortured by insecurity and fear, which in the end left him powerless to resist even the gravest of sins, like the murder of his six brothers, whom he feared were after his throne. Elisha, the great man of God, watched as all of this transpired. He saw the evil that was growing in Judah and sent word of God's judgment to Jehoram. His sins had not gone unnoticed, and as a result, God was going to wipe out the king and his sons. Just as the prophet had said, Jehoram and his sons all died. The last of which was Ahaziah, the king who we learned died when Jehu came to power. Ahaziah and Israel's king Joram both died at the hand of Jehu. Athaliah was left without a husband or any children. But rather than being fearful for her future or turn to God in repentance of her own sins, Athaliah doubled down. She saw the threat to her power, David's line, and proposed to destroy every descendant of King David. This included her own grandchildren. We could view this as simply the evil plot of a woman hungry for power and unwilling to repent. But we know that there was something much deeper going on here. There was a spiritual battle taking place, a cosmic war. Our greatest enemy, the devil, knows God's plan to bring the Savior, the Lord Jesus, as Messiah through David's line. Seen in that light, Athaliah's plot to wipe out David's lineage was the work of Satan, who seeks to kill, steal, and destroy. But God's plans are impossible to stop. And even as Athaliah plotted death, one of God's servants was in her midst. And in 2 Kings 11.2, here's what we find. But Jehosheba, the daughter of King Joram, the sister of Ahaziah, took Johas, the son of Ahaziah, and stole him away from among the king's sons who were about to be put to death. And she put him and his nurse in a bedroom. Thus they hid him from Athaliah so that he was not put to death. Queen Athaliah's reign of terror lasted six years, and in the seventh year, Jehosheba revealed that her son Joash was alive, as is the line of David. His father Jehoda, the priest, anointed the child as king, and the seven-year-old child was placed under strong protection. The people were quick to welcome a new king, as Queen Athaliah had brought them nothing but pain and suffering. And when she tried to seize the child to kill him, her guards refused to help her. Instead, she was taken to a stable and executed. Though the plans of Satan may seem to prevail for a time, God will always accomplish his will and his purpose. And so this child, the anointed one, Joash, carried on the line of David and ushered in an era of peace and obedience to God. As a result of Jehoshiva's faithfulness to God, the child was preserved and God's plan carried on, and one day the Messiah would indeed come through the line of David. Lord God, we remember today that no plot against you, no plan against your work and your will will ever prosper. We're reminded of this today through the life of Joash 
and the bravery, the courage of his mother to preserve him. Thank you for doing your will and accomplish your purposes in our lives. We know that we have a destiny with you, and our destiny is found in our relationship through our Lord Jesus Christ with you, our God and Father. Amen. Thank you for listening to today's Bible in a Year podcast. I'm Pastor Jack Graham from Dallas, Texas. Download the Pray.com app and make prayer and Bible study a priority in your life. And if you enjoyed this podcast, tell someone else about it. We would love to connect with you at jackgraham.org for there are resources and opportunities for you to continue to grow in your faith through this ministry. God bless you.